So this is your Nature Journal Workshop. I'm your host, John Muir Laws, and today we're playing with turkeys. Um, for a lot of people, uh, when they think turkey, they get this in mind. And um, this is, it, uh, if you have uh, something like this in your house, or you will soon, this is actually an amazing opportunity to 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 think about the structure of birds so you're going to be bringing this little bird model this very well articulated bird model into your house and you'll have a chance actually to do a dissection of it and look at the major muscle groups this is this is fantastic this is really really cool so um what i um recommend doing is thinking about the bird um upside down right so here is here is the, the bird. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort of think about how um, this, whoops, not you, um, this, when we hold it this way, we can actually start to see a little bit more of the relationship between how these things look when they are out in the wild. So here I go. Um, I am going to, all right, so the, this bird up the one up here in the corner, it has, it has a hip, it has a knee, it has a heel, and that then goes down to onto the foot bone and its toes are out on the ground. So it has um, three toes that go forward, one toe that goes back from that. But so just like you, your bird has those same bones. So hip bone, knee, heel, now imagine that this in, in a human being, this is where your this whole thing down here is the foot. So the stuff that you see sticking out the bottom of the turkey, it is, well, let's let's take a look over here at this this uh, the 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 turkey on the screen here. If you take the little back leg and you kind of wiggle it around, you'll find it articulating from a point right back up in here. And so that's the thigh bone, and the thigh bone comes in here. And the thigh meat, right? It's all around there. So there's your there's your nice thigh. Um, from this joint, you go back to the heel of the bird. And that's what you see sticking out right there. So the drumstick. is the calf of the bird. And what they've done is they've snipped off right here, they've snipped off the foot of the bird. So um, if this, we want to kind of get this to be posed a little bit more like a real turkey, what we're going to do is from this joint right here, we're going to pivot the foot down and so that this, instead of being out here, we're going to have that down like this. And then your foot comes out from that. And so on the other side of the bird, its other leg is going to be coming out. And as you can see, this there's 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 some meat on the bones here and there's also going to be feathers that stick out so that this is this is sort of a big kind of shank that you'll see sticking out the bottom of your turkey and then down here in the grass that's where your 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 feet are going to be one claw uh one toe going back three forward <clears throat> on the foot. 
this little bump right back here is where the tail attaches on. And so in there, the tail is going to be put there. And this, this, is, this is flexible from the, the, the spine here. There's actually a series of little bones that come out to a bigger bone here. And so it can take its tail and turn it up. So it's pivoting from a point right about in here. And what's what's great again about having a, you know, getting to do one of these home bird dissections is that you can move all these joints around and you can sort of figure out and if you can visualize what that's like with the um, with the all the 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 the, the with the feather on with the bird, bird attached to it, it's really going to help you be able to draw. Um, so right up here is the shoulder. And the shoulder goes back to a bone here. That's your elbow. And then, you know, you in your forearm, you have two bones in your forearm. I want everybody to sort of uh, squeeze onto your own forearm right now and to kind of rotate your wrist around a little bit, All right? When you do that, you are feeling um, those, those two bones that are in your forearm. So this turkey also has two bones in here. And so if you get to eating a, uh, a wing here, as you nibble around those two bones, realize that just like you, that's, you're on the radius and ulna of the bird. And then attached to that, here's your wrist joint. There's a few carpal bones in here. And this little pad sticking out right here, that is the bird's thumb. This right here is the bird's hand. And the bones of the hand are fused together in birds. Um, but you can see the, the strong similarities to your own skeleton. So from shoulder, there's one bone that goes back, the humerus, then we get the radius and ulna, just like you, up to your hand bones, and that makes your chicken wing, All right? So you, what you wanna do is, is, is just play around with, uh, before you cook it, you wanna get your turkey out and sort of move it around, you know, and because it's much easier to move when the, um, uh, before you cook the turkey. So take those little wings and sort of see what the range of motion is and sort of figure out like, oh, like that's how you move your arm. I see what's going on with you, little bird. So you can have a lot of fun doing that. Now, this, as you know, there's, there's, there's lots of, 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 of white meat, breast meat right in here. The turkey has big, um, partially because of, um, of the, so birds have big breast muscles to help them fly. Then we have um, selection from us human beings and we've selected for turkeys with even larger breast muscles. Um, so that's why you have this really big, uh, big breast muscles on, a, on the, the turkey that you eat. However, the, um, However, the um, even on a wild turkey, you still will find um, fairly large, large, large breast muscles. What's missing here is the neck, and sometimes when you buy your turkey, you open up the inside, and it uh, and there's a little packet inside, and it has the neck. Um, the neck attaches up in here, and it is the neck is an S shaped bit of business. So there's an S-shaped neck that attaches to the turkey's head. When you get your, your own neck out, see if you can kind of figure out which end goes where. 
and 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 move it around. You can get you can sort of feel the the S shaped movement in the neck of the of the the the, the bird that you get from the, the the grocery store. And now what we're going to do is cover the whole body up with feathers. So here around the lower part of the neck, there is a big, actually I'm going to switch colors here. Here around the neck, now let's go for a darker color, it'll be easier to see. Here around the neck, there's a big cone, a big cone of feathers. And that's going to sort of, so you you have this sort of what looks sort of uh, vulturey neck coming down into this big thick cone of feathers. The body then is covered with with these these feathers. And here underneath the tail, there is a body of feathers coming up here. There's a little pad of feathers right here under the tail that kind of contours. You see that a little bit up in here. There's a little bit of feathers that kind of contour the tail up into the body. Those are called the undertail coverts. We have these little shanks sticking out. And those are the, the major sort of body feather masses. If we look at the turkey from the front, um, something that's, that's cool, as they're walking towards you, you'll see that the foot kind of comes into the center line, as if this is the sort of where the bird's weight is coming down, as it is kind of as it's walking towards you and this other foot is off the ground, you'll see that the foot that is on the ground, the leg comes in to support all that weight. The feathers on the front of the chest are clearly divided into two big sections. And so, and we'll be taking a look at, at that later on. So anytime you're seeing this from the front, look for kind of a little seam going right up the front of the, 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 the turkey, right? So there is a little bit of turkey kind of adapted from the one on your dinner plate. And then we've, we've put some, some feathers and structures, other structures over this. The big thing which we haven't done here is taking a look at what's going on with the wing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw some feathers onto the wing here. And then what we're going to do is look at a picture of a turkey's wing, a real one, and we're going to try to make some sense out of that. <clears throat> All right. The, if you look along here, this is kind of a fun thing to do. If you look along the back edge of the hand, do you see these little bumps? I'm kind of coloring them in here. The little bumps along there. And when you get your turkey, you will also find a series of bumps along here. Let's clear all these things. So look for those bumps there in that photograph. These are the attachment points of the wing feathers, the primary and the secondary feathers. The primary feathers attach to the hand of the turkey. So coming out from each of these points, there's, there are going to be, those are where the feathers attach to 
So those are places where the primary feathers attach along the hand of the bird. And depending on how it is holding its wrist, these feathers get either folded into a little pile or fanned out. If the wrist is rocked back here more, then you, you see something like this, where the feathers will be pointing back in this direction. And those feathers, when they do that, they make a nice, neat little pile. So I'm going to draw, this is this pile of all the feathers. So the one on top here, you'd have a feather like this. And then the next feather would come in next to that. The next feather would be down below that one. And so all these feathers kind of pile up to make this little kind of tight case of feathers that sticks out the back of the wing. When the hand is pointing down this direction more, you get more of a, of a fan in the positions of these feathers. So the first one would be here, here, So the primary feathers, these again are the primary feathers, attaching to the hand will either make, as the hand is dropped down, more of a fan, or as it tucks up more, more of a just sort of tight pile. Along the back edge of the forearm, that is where you get the secondary feathers attaching. And the secondary feathers here are going to make a kind of a pile. The one that's on top is the one that attaches closest to the elbow here. It's a shorter feather and it'll kind of stick down like this. And then the next one comes in and it's a little bit longer. And then the next one comes in and it's the full length here. And then the next one tucks under that. And so you get this whole kind of pile of feathers like that. And you can have the primary feathers then sticking out underneath them. So this is, again, on the forearm here, the radius on ulna. These are the secondary feathers, the primary feathers attaching to the hand. This is one last little note that's kind of fun. This little thumb here, that is where there's actually a special little pad of feathers that attaches to that called the allula. And so often on the front edge of, of, of a wing, you'll see this extra little kind of bit sticking down. And then you have, you know, you say your primary feather sticking out below that. and a block of secondary feathers above it. The whole upper part of the wing here, in here, is also going to be covered with a zone of smaller feathers, smaller contour feathers. These are called covert feathers. I'm going to just switch colors here, go for some green. So up in this zone, the top edge here of these feathers on the primaries, and up here in 
on the top edge of the secondaries, that's where there's sort of a zone of smaller feathers, and those are called covert feathers. So here is the wing of a bird. Isn't that cool? Um, <clears throat> so this, this wing, um, see if you can pick out what are the primary feathers on this turkey wing and what are the secondary feathers on this turkey wing. All right. I am going to get some pink here. So you have <clears throat> underneath here, you have a bone that comes down to an elbow up to a wrist and into a hand. I'm actually not very sure about the orientation of this, this bone here, somewhere under there. Here attached to the forearm are all of these secondary feathers. And here attached to the hand, actually attached to the thumb is hand, I'm gonna actually put at a slightly um, the hand at a slightly different angle here. Um, and have my thumb sticking out here in my hand like this, attached to my hand, I have this whole fan of feathers here. So this fan out here are the primary feathers. These ones in here are the secondary feathers. And across the top of the secondaries are a bunch of smaller feathers. Across the top of the primaries, actually right in here, is are several rows of other small feathers. So I've got small feathers here, another row of those here. You can see several rows of smaller feathers here. In here, you can see all these different rows going up. These ones, these feathers at the top, those are the covert feathers. Um, and these ones right over here, these are covert feathers on the primaries. So I'm gonna put primary coverts PC and, uh, oops, sorry, um, secondary coverts. There. Let me clear, oh, one last thing on my scribblings here is between the shoulder and the wrist, there's also an area of stretchy skin here covered with feathers. That is called the patagium, and that kind of, um, makes up this sort of the front edge of the wing here. Let me clear all these drawings. And what you want to do is make a little study of this wing, a little drawing kind of blocking in those basic parts of the wing. Notice here down here on the, the uh, secondary feathers, there's a series of smaller feathers then getting big. On most little songbirds, you have one, two, three feathers, and then you get to the whole pile the same length. Here, there's a few more that kind of round it out, giving the wing in flight more of a kind of a ball, a rounded look. So make a little study of this. 
as 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 a reference and and a review of those basic wing parts. Notice that the primary coverts are occupying up to here. It's kind of a, it's subtle to see that little difference, but that's what you've got. There. Notice, especially on, on these coverts, that the first row of coverts is big, and then they get smaller. But there's a very bold, prominent layer with dark tips here. And we have a very large layer in here. This one here, you're not really going to be able to see because it's going to be hidden. But notice for now, notice this, what are called the greater coverts. Um, and to be a little bit more specific, the greater secondary coverts. And I'm going to leave this there on your screen for about 30 more seconds for you to finish up just a little study, a little diagram. Try to label your diagram. And now we get to draw a turkey. Oh boy. Before we go to drawing this turkey, let's just analyze this thing a little bit, okay? Um, now, you know, it's, it's, it, this thing is so puffed out, we've kind of lost track of what is going on with, uh, you know, the skeleton and all those other sorts of things. But let's just kind of give ourselves a few landmarks. Take a look. Let's start over here on the wing. See if we can make sense out of what is going on with the wing. Can you see the greater secondary coverts? So remember that that was But my screen is not allowing me to back up right now. Oh. There, there we go. Well, remember this big patch? Well, no, not you. Ah. All right. Um, remember that the large secondary covert patch here, this sort of coppery area right here, this big coppery area, see if you can find that on this Tom. Male turkeys are called toms. So here's the tom. Isn't that cool? So there's a there's, that's a really useful landmark. That's a really useful landmark. Um, so here. These are my greater secondary coverts. Sticking out from behind that, curving around, these are what feathers? Those are your secondaries. You have this big wedge hanging down here. Those are your primary feathers there, and you can sort of see the edge of the primary coverts here. Mostly just that in the primary covert zone, you don't you don't really see the edge of the feathers, but you see that the the little black and white patterns become much more sort of tight and closer together. This patch up here, those are 
the median and lesser secondary coverts. So these are more, so this whole area is the wing. So these are um, lesser secondary coverts. The one right row right here would be median secondary coverts. So greater median and lesser secondary coverts. That whole area is the secondary coverts. Above that, we are seeing kind of a big zone that kind of tucks above the, the wing. These are the scapular feathers, the scapular feathers. So when you're thinking about it, sort of a, I'm going to draw kind of a quick little songbird here. Um, if I drew a songbird, and it, it has its own little wing, you would see above where the, the wing attaches, a very kind of subtle little shoulder zone right in there. It's a useful thing for kind of tucking the wing of your bird into uh, into the body. You kind of look for, can I see kind of any evidence of scapular feathers here? Sometimes, uh, you know, you're looking at the, the, the back of a, a, a bird. Here's the top edge of the wing. And the wing is sticking down here. Sometimes you just sort of see a little kind of slight, slightly just a little kind of slight crease, a little indentation. Sometimes the patterns that are on the bird, like the streaks may be coming down this way on the back. And then you get to the scapular feathers and you see that they take a slightly different direction. So on most songbirds, this is, it's a sort of a small zone, but a nice little kind of subtlety that we can put in our drawings. But here it's making up this big part of the bird. We then have the back feathers up here. Here's that cone that we had around the neck, now flattened out against the side of the body here. And remember what we said about the front of the chest of the bird, those two big different zones. I have this area here and this one over here, those are those breast feathers making these, these two big kind of breast plates on the bird. When you're drawing something like this, it's very helpful to think about cross contour lines. Cross contour lines are lines that sort of, you can think of as wrapping around a subject. And so if I, you know, here you've got these lines, imagine yourself just sort of three dimensionally, if you were to pat this bird, you kind of go up here and then, you know, you would, you know, here's, here's another big bump, right? So you want to, to think of these as sort of wrapping three-dimensionally around your bird. So each one of these zones You can imagine sculpting that with sets of curved lines. And the, the, the curved lines on, that you see through these feather groups here, you're actually going in two directions, right? And here, just like a pine cone. When drawing something like this, I don't suggest that you get in there and you draw in every little feather. One way of approaching this would be, let's say this is the, the, the front of the chest of my bird and I've got, I've got a zone 
where I want to put in just sort of a hint of this texture. What I might do is I might put in a few of these like that. And then, you know, cross those with a little bit of, of this. And you don't have to get in here and draw in every feather. It's a little bit of this kind of hatching. Can suggest that. <clears throat> And if you're here for the Capricaylee workshop, you see the same geometry that we had in that Capricaylee workshop, this side not being, side X not being the same shape as side Y. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, we recorded it and made little paper models and played here. So it's neat to see that same little kind of Capricaylee idea um coming in here again the the lessons that we learn from one sketch we can then apply across all these other different species so that is a Second. So that is a little bit of strategy on playing. Hold on, clear these clear drawings. Playing with turkeys. And it's my hope that um, if any large birds do come to people's houses um, that you can take some time just to play with those to uh, to uh, use them as an opportunity to learn about the structure of hold on a second I am Having a hard hard time finding my my Zoom controls. I'm lost. Ah, here we go. There we go. Hi. Um, um, so I hope that that uh, some of these uh, strategies can be useful um, to help you understand not just the turkey, but really any bird. It's a, an opportunity to to use you, Thanksgiving uh, this year if you are uh, celebrating that with a bird in. Um, use it as you know just sort of explain to the family that part of tonight's meal is going to be a dissection right and just geek out on bird anatomy as you are getting into this turkey and you will learn something mad bonus points for anybody in this community who during Thanksgiving dinner busts out their nature journal and takes some notes and sketches about the anatomy of the bird, either during the preparation process or during your meal. A great opportunity also to be a nature journaling evangelist and um, share some of those, um, those, those thoughts, ideas, and processes with the uh, entire family. By the way, if you're there with your entire family, you're doing it wrong. Um, they're watching over Zoom. So this year, do want to just remind everybody, let's keep it small. We are all, we're, we're the, there is a light on the horizon. We will get out of this thing. I know we're all fatigued from this crazy, crazy COVIDness. But if here at the end, especially in heart of winter, if we do large gatherings, we are setting either ourselves and our family up for trouble or the nice elders who we have invited 
to the meal, right? So it's 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 really hard, but I I want to just to 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 we we have to keep taking care of each other. We have to keep taking care of sort of your family, your extended family, and the world community here. Um, and one way we can do that is by we have to keep with these these restrictions for a little bit longer. And it's going to be different and it's going to be OK. And because you're not going to be entertaining as many people, then you have lots of opportunities for turkey dissection and, and, and geeking out with that. You won't be inconveniencing everybody because you're there with your nature journal um, checking all those things out. We'll give it a try. Um, I'm now going to kind of open this to questions about aspects of the turkey anatomy um, and the um, if there's uh, first of all, there are any kind of direct questions about what hold on I'm going to see if I'm going to allow participants to unmute themselves um, and we'll do a little bit of a share in a moment but um, are there any um, thoughts questions or ideas um, about this this uh, strange bit of bird business that we were that we're, we're, we're playing with here yeah I got it I just have to say this Jack <laughs> I, that I'm sounds gonna... like Joe Coho oh actually hold on I'm gonna uh, remove my pin so that we can jump to your screen. Um, oh, there you are. Hey, Joe, good to see you. Hi, I'm, I'm going to turn this on. <laughs> I... oh, hold on, you're, you're frozen. You're frozen. You have to, to, to move to a, a, a place with a better connection. I think we've lost Joe's connection. Um, oh, there we are. Joe's back. Hey, Joe, you're live. Oh, sir. Sorry, I guess I disappeared. Maybe I'm going to go back to taking my picture away just in case that is causing my internet connection to. to but I was, what I was laughing at, Jack, was most people do this thing where they sort of psychologically separate themselves from what they eat. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so. I was going, oh yeah, so now Jack has created, uh, you know, 50 more vegetarians because they're going to oh. look at the turkey <laughs> and they're, they're never going to see it as a drumstick or as a wing or, um, or, or, or the, the wishbone, but they're going yeah. to be seeing it as a real live bird. And That's right. It's, it's shocking to think that chicken wings were wings of chickens. <laughs> anyway, I was just, I was rolling on the floor as I was also enjoying your drawing. You know? Ah, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it, it's, it's important to, to, to realize that uh, we are, um, if, if, if we're eating animals, we're, we're eating animals. And um, the more that we can understand that, and it, so, but I'm saying that if you are, um, by the way, no no birds were harmed in the making of this video, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, if you are eating a a, a a a a bird at home, either a little chicken or a turkey, um, just use it as an app an, an opportunity for for playing with anatomy. Um, the um, with uh, with 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 my girls, if we have a full turkey, we spend some time like you can we can make it dance, we can make it flap, we can you can have fun with it. You can so it'll it'll be it'll be an experience. But um, thanks for your comments. Jack, there's a question if you can explain the turkey waddle and under chin structures. Oh, yeah, th isn't that crazy? Um, and, 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 and not just under chin structures, a bunch of this kind of like hangs off of the face. <laughs> right. um, what these are, are sort of, um, are, are, are protrusions of, extensions of, of, of the skin on the on the on the upper face and the throat that are um, swollen and um, 
and, and, and colored for, for being a very, very attractive turkey. So the tom with the base, best face ornamentation and the best show um, uh, gets, gets to breed. So, so turkeys are, are, are lecking animals. The, the guys will get together in this big group and they'll just like, look at my waddle, right? You know, I, got, I, got, I got a bright red and blue. I'm going blue, I'm going full blue on this thing, right? And so, and then the females kind of go through and they kind of go like, mm, no, not so much. Mm, what about you? And then they go like, ooh, check out the waddle on that guy, right? And so they then choose their mates in that, that, that big thing. So lecking birds um, will often have, you know, that you got to outperform everybody else. So those are extensions of, of facial and throat skin. Um, and you will see on younger birds, um, the, those are not as well developed. So, um, you, you, you'll, you'll see a lot of variation in that. So the next time you actually have a chance to see a group of wild turkeys, start checking out and they're, especially if they're at this time of year, they're doing their displays and it's really fun. Um, so you can see those, uh, those, those features and compare across those birds. Okay. Um, and, and, and it's also very helpful for me. Um, I, I love it, what, Brian, if you, if you feed questions to me, um, because that way Dyslexic Jack doesn't have to read. <laughs> no problem. There is another question, um, and maybe this is ornamental as well, but there's a feather that sticks out from the front chest as well. Yep. That's right. Let's just jump back to that share screen for a while. It looks like they they have a tail in the wrong place. <laughs> a donkey's tail. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, like where does this go? It kind of reminds me of when um, paleontologists found the first iguanodon skeletons. Um, iguanodon uh, was this dinosaur, and they found these these skeletons, and there's this big spike. So they stuck it on the head like a rhinoceros. It actually went on the bird, the animal's thumb. It was a, a, a thumb spike. Later, they found better articulated skeletons. They were able to put that on the on the hand of the iguanodon. But it looks like, yeah, somebody put the the you know was paying pin the tail on the turkey, and just uh, you know got a um, got it all wrong here. Um, but uh, yeah, that little beard sticks out the front here. That's 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 just part that's this is all the this is all the show look at those spectacular colors spectacular colors i mean how I mean, that's it that's a that's a very attractive turkey and then on the tail feathers are there two layers yes so that's a good great question let's um let me just jump into this view and we'll kind of annotate that. Um, you're absolutely right. What you're seeing is, um, <clears throat> what, what you're seeing is of course that the outer layer of, 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 of feathers, but then there is this inner one coming up here. So that is, those are uh, smaller feathers at the base of the tail. And then if you look further down, you're getting, you know, another row of smaller ones down here. So rows of smaller ones that, but you're right, there's, you're seeing feathers, upper tail coverts. Um, a set of upper tail coverts across the base of it. And they're doing that same fan thing where this angle is different than this angle. This is different than this. This is smaller because it is angled slightly away from you. If you want more on that, you can check out that Capricaly workshop and we, we really did some kind of a deep dive on that. 